So we need to talk about the Xbox Series S. Now, I don't want to sound like a conspiracy theorist, but that big leak that happened last night from the YouTuber Brad Sams that leaked the Xbox Series S and leaked the price of $299, I have a feeling that Microsoft gave him the okay to make that video and that it wasn't really a leak and that Microsoft had every intention of revealing the Xbox Series S right before Sony's PS5 price reveal, which will happen tomorrow, September 9th, because it does a really good job at undercutting Sony. And I feel like Sony and Microsoft have been playing tag with each other on who's going to reveal the price first for their console. One company wants to undercut the other in terms of price, but they were probably afraid to be the first one to reveal their new console because they think the other company would just counteract by cutting the cost of theirs, right? So let's say Microsoft reveals the price of the Series X at... 499 then Sony says oh yeah well our PS5 is gonna be 450 or 399 even and so Microsoft and Sony were just scared that if they reveal their console first that could possibly give a huge advantage to the competition and make them better prepared heading into next gen but Microsoft decided to just reveal the Xbox Series X even though it was a leak whatever still I think they revealed the Xbox Series S on purpose on the day before Sony's price reveal for the PS5. Not just to throw a monkey wrench in the PS5 reveal, but also because they're confident enough that Sony will never match that price of $299, no matter what. And I think it's brilliant. I think it's the most brilliant thing Microsoft has done so far heading into next gen in terms of getting people to actually give a shit about their new consoles. Because a $299 next gen console, that's a big deal. And Sony should be really concerned about this. So should Nintendo, because their Nintendo Switch is priced at $299 right now. I'm talking about the original Switch, not the Switch Lite, which is $199. But that's going to be tough for Nintendo. If they want the Switch to stay relevant, they might have to cut the price of the base model for the Switch if they want that console to keep selling. Because if you have a next-gen console, a full next-gen experience for the same price as a Switch, Nintendo has to try to do something to counteract that. So it's not just Sony that should be concerned, it's also Nintendo. Because Microsoft and the Series S can absolutely kill the Nintendo Switch's momentum going forward if Nintendo doesn't do anything in response. We have to get a Switch price cut. I mean, Nintendo has to do that at this point. There's no way they can keep the Switch at $299. No way. Now, as far as Sony goes, this is going to be a more interesting dynamic because over the past few months, Sony has just had way more going for it with the PS5 than Microsoft has with the Series X. So we've, we've had more games for the PS5 revealed, more exclusives, and just a lot more overall excitement about the PlayStation 5 within the gaming community than the Series X. But the Series S, that console could be a game changer for Microsoft. And I'll go as far as to say that that console alone might be enough for Microsoft to win the console war in the ninth generation. And this is coming from someone that has made so many negative videos about Microsoft and how the Series X stands no chance against the PS5. The PS5 is going to do incredibly well. Microsoft, what the hell are they doing? Well, this console, the Xbox Series S, a $299 next-gen console, with ray tracing and everything, that's a big fucking deal. Because we're in the middle of one of the worst economic recessions in history. A lot of people right now care more about whether or not they can pay for their groceries, whether or not they can pay the mortgage, rent. They care a lot more about that than getting a new shiny box. But if that new shiny box is affordable enough for them, then they just might upgrade. But for $4.99, I think that's really steep, considering a lot of the hardships people are going through right now. I mean, back in 2013, the economy was doing pretty good. That's when the PS4 launched, and there were a lot of people that couldn't afford that console seven years ago. And I knew a lot of people that didn't even get a next-gen console, meaning an eighth-gen console, until 2016, 2017. So imagine how many people cannot afford a $500 console in 2020 because that is most likely the price point that Sony at least has been looking at for a while. I don't know if this Series S reveal is going to make Sony just knock the price down last minute. That very well could happen, but all we do know is that Sony is releasing two PlayStation 5s, one with a disk drive and one without. Now, there could be a $100 price difference between the two, so we can have a $500 console with a disk drive and a $400 console without one, but that's still a $100 difference between the PS5 and the Series S, which also does not have a disk drive. So even if there's only a $100 difference in price between the PS5 and Series S, Sony should still be really concerned, because look at Xbox, look at the Xbox One, how it was $500 compared to the PS4, 
at $400 because remember, if you wanted an Xbox One, you also had to get a Kinect. So they were bundled together for $500. And of course, the big problem with that was nobody gave a fuck about the Kinect. The Kinect was a huge failure and it really hurt Microsoft's momentum throughout the entire 8th gen. So if the PS5 is even just $100 more expensive than the Series S, Sony has to try its best to convince people that it's worth the extra $100. And in a bad economy, that might be a really tough thing to do. And looking at the PS5, it might not have a lot of really good launch titles. I mean, we have Spider-Man Miles Morales, but we really don't have much else to go along with it. All the big PS5 exclusives, like Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and some of the other games they revealed, they won't come out until 2021. So I would say that there's a chance that Microsoft could actually win this holiday season and sell a lot more Xboxes than Sony sells PlayStation 5s, but Spider-Man is actually a really big deal for a lot of people, and it just might be enough for Sony to gain a little bit of momentum over Microsoft heading into next gen. It would be one thing if Halo Infinite didn't get delayed, I think at that point it would be all but over for Sony, at least for the first few months of next gen release. But since Halo Infinite got delayed, Sony and Spider-Man is really the only thing people have looking forward to. I mean, there's a lot of third-party games. Maybe people just don't care enough about Spider-Man. They don't want to spend an extra $100 for a PlayStation 5, and they just might go with the Series S. But I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how it's going to play out. But I do think that a console, no matter how cheap or expensive it is, it's only as good as its exclusives. And Microsoft right now doesn't really have a lot of games, a lot of exclusive games to convince people to buy the console. So... Spider-Man may just be enough to get Sony the momentum they need because that Halo Infinite delay was a huge blow to Microsoft because now they have nothing except for third-party games that will also be on the PS5 and backwards compatibility. But even still, that $100 difference might just be enough for Microsoft to be really successful this generation and possibly beat Sony because I think there's no way that Sony is going to release the PS5 for $299, that's just way too cheap for Sony to go for. Even if that's probably something they should think about doing, they're not gonna do that. Cause they just think they'd be way better off pricing the console at $399 or even $499. But what Microsoft's doing right now might change a lot of things for Sony and their strategies. The only other thing I can think of that Sony might have an advantage of over Microsoft is the whole paid online situation where PlayStation Plus costs $60 a year while Microsoft recently raised the prices quite significantly for Xbox Live Gold, and that's probably the reason why they're able to have a $299 console, is because they expect the people who buy the cheap console will also get Xbox Live Gold. But instead of $60 a year, their online will cost $100 a year now. So that's a $40 annual increase. Microsoft thinks that increase will be enough to subsidize the loss they'll take for the Xbox Series S, because you know they're gonna take a huge loss for that console. It's definitely gonna cost Microsoft a lot more than $300 to build that thing. They might take a $200, $300, even $400 loss in order to sell that thing. So that might just be the reason why they raised the prices for Xbox Live Gold, but people realize that gold is so much more expensive that they'll just break even buying a PS5, that might hurt Microsoft. But that just depends on how smart consumers actually are and if they actually look into things like that about paid online and how much the annual subscriptions are because you know, that is a hidden cost. It's not an upfront thing that Microsoft says, oh yeah, you pay $100 a year for online gaming. No, like they keep it hidden. They're like, oh yeah, you get the three month subscription for $24.99. But if you do the math, it's $100 a year because they took away the annual subscription for gold, which was 60. You can no longer have a 12 month subscription for Xbox Live Gold, but you can buy a 12 month subscription for Game Pass Ultimate, which includes Xbox Live Gold for $100 a year. So a big part of it is to grow Game Pass even more, and also I think it's a way to subsidize the cost that they'll be paying for a $299 console, because I can guarantee you it costs way more than $299 to make that thing, and Microsoft might just be looking for ways to recoup some of those losses that they'll take. Now whether or not that's going to bite them in the ass and people are going to realize that it's actually more expensive in the long term to have an Xbox and a PlayStation, who knows? But that might be something that people aren't really talking about. You know, people are talking about, oh my god, $299 is amazing, and I was kind of starting to say that, but then now the more I think about it, people might think, wait a second, it costs a lot more to play games online than Xbox and PlayStation, so it just might be worth getting a PlayStation. But then again, Sony could just raise the prices of PlayStation Plus, and then none of what I said would even matter. But I have a feeling that paid online might play a little bit of a role in people's 
buying decision because if it costs forty dollars more every year to play on an xbox than to play on a playstation do the math if a playstation 5 costs a hundred dollars more but xbox live gold is forty dollars more a year than playstation plus you'll be spending a hundred and twenty dollars more to play on xbox over a three-year period than playstation so in three years the playstation 5 will save you more money than if you get an xbox series x but are consumers actually smart enough to realize that I'm not entirely sure. All I know is that the introduction of the Series S for a price point of $299, that's definitely going to shake things up quite a bit heading into next gen. And if Sony wants to keep the PS5's momentum, they have to respond to this. I don't know how, but they have to. But anyway, that's all I have for today. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about the Xbox Series S and how you think it's going to affect the PS5 success. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys again later. Bye.